Hi everyone, Simon here from the Storytelling with Data team and in today's video we are going to take a look at combo charts. What they are, why people use them, some of the different options and alternatives we have, the challenges that we have with combination charts and importantly alternatives that we can consider instead. Now for those of you watching who aren't familiar with combo charts, also known as combination charts, dual axis charts, secondary y axis charts, well essentially these are a mashup of one or more different chart types with different types of data encodings and can include a mix of bars, lines, dots or even areas. People typically turn to a combo chart for one or a combination of the following few reasons. They can compare series with different magnitudes, show related series with different units, for example dollar values and percentage amounts. Or they feel that they don't have space for two separate graphs, so want to push everything into that one visual. And despite these reasons being well intentioned, they do present us with some challenges. Let's take a look at those now. In this example, we are looking at a classic bar and line combo. The chart title tells us we are looking at some email related metrics and we can see we have two vertical axes. The first challenge we have with this chart type is that it just takes longer to process. In addition to all the typical visual processing we need to do, we also need to spend time orientating ourselves to which data relates to which axis. This is valuable time that our audience likely doesn't have. If we must use a dual axis, then we can help our audience with considerate labeling and formatting of our axes. Instead of having the legends at the bottom, moving it next to where our axes is would help. We could choose to color our axis labels and titles in the same style as the data, which would also help with that connection. While subtle, having a consistent number of intervals for each of our axes makes it a little less challenging to process. These aspects are easy to achieve, don't take a huge amount of time and make understanding of this data slightly easier. But it doesn't solve some of the other challenges we face with our combo charts. Another option to help reduce the impact of those confusing lines is to simply remove them and label the data directly. In this example, we don't have to look up the value of the lines on an axis because they aren't there anymore. This does save one pain point, but notice the additional elements that have been introduced. Ask yourself whether this has introduced a level of visual clutter that ideally we want to avoid. More concerning though than just simply taking longer to process our visual is when we turn to combo charts to present and encode data of vastly different magnitudes. In this example, we are looking at box office takings for the top five grossing films of all time. A combo chart has been used to represent worldwide takings in grey with the UK takings in blue. Now we assess these bars by measuring the bar length, something we are very good at, but by doing so we are making comparisons that just aren't correct. Are the UK takings for Avatar greater than the worldwide equivalent? Well of course, that doesn't make sense, but our eyes are already tuning into those comparisons. When presented with this scenario, one alternative we can explore is just to create two views and show them side by side with their own representative scales. Now we need to be careful here with ensuring our axes are clearly labeled, but this view certainly removes that misleading comparison that we faced in the original. In the previous example there, we saw that combo charts can be misleading, but they can also prompt us into thinking that interesting shapes, patterns or trends that might appear within our data are more important than they actually are. Here we are looking at another classic combo chart, one which attempts to compare two relatable but different metrics. In this case, sales amounts in dollars and the number of orders. But within this graph, I'm curious, where do your eyes land upon first? I'm willing to guess that a lot of us will see when those lines cross over between Q3 and Q4 of last year as the most attention grabbing detail. Is this crossover point conveying something important within the data? Potentially yes, but it might just be an oddity of how the scales are currently set up. We have a view where we are drawn to this point and run the risk of making meaningless comparisons. If we were to adjust the scales, something we are able to do with our line charts to zoom in to the important points, you can see we have the same two lines, but as the scales are different, the lines don't cross. Proving the point that whether the lines intersect or not, and if so where, 
isn't meaningful. Now we could make that clear to our audience with additional annotations, but then we are essentially saying, well, don't look at this graph for any interesting shapes, patterns, or trends. And if we aren't able to quickly or accurately retrieve this information, it does rather feel as though use cases for combo charts are extremely limited, if at all. And if we admit defeat of using these charts, well, what alternatives do we have to move forward? The first suggestion is a simple one and one we touched upon earlier. Pull the two elements out into their own separate graphs. We can share the horizontal axis to save on repetition, but now each line has its own axis. We don't face the same difficulties as previously. We might ask ourselves if there's a better way to show this data. We could transform the numbers into relative increases and decreases and plot these directly on a common scale. In this example, the first data point, Q1 of last year, is set at 100%, with each subsequent period displaying the percentage variance from that initial point. This does allow us to compare these lines with one another. And from here, we can see that orders have remained relatively steady, but sales appear to be declining. Perhaps we don't need two individual lines, and we can think about showing one metric as a proportion of another. In this case, we've taken the opportunity to calculate the sales amount per order for each month. With this view, we have the clearest sense yet of the decreasing trend, which indicates that even though the number of orders remain consistent, the value of those orders is decreasing. The final option, which is perhaps a little bit more unconventional, is to use a connected scatter plot. The X and Y values now represent the two metrics we were plotting previously with our two vertical axes, and the data points are the individual periods of time. To provide the sense that this is continuous time data, the points can be connected with a line. Following the line, we begin to build a journey of how the sales and orders have evolved, with some notable outliers standing out. Now, this is certainly a more novel option and may take time to explain to an audience, but given the opportunity of a live presentation, it could work well by introducing the progression gradually to aid your audience's understanding as you build up that story. We've taken a look at a number of different reasons at why a combo chart might be considered, but in all of those cases provided a compelling case of why an alternative might be better, certainly when it comes to allowing our audience to retrieve those insights more efficiently and in a more accurate way. If you have any other alternatives to the combo chart that you didn't see covered here today, please feel free to put those in the comment. If you enjoyed the video, take a second to give it a like. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.